Hi, good evening. My name is Tom, um, my name is Frederick, and you're listening to Chiron Foundation Radio on the House of Divination. In this live feed, I am presenting to you the astrology forecast for the year ahead in 2023. Now, this is the first astrology forecast Chiron Foundation is conducting live on Facebook in collaboration with the House of Divination. We are looking forward to many forecasts for the years ahead after this one. So for this astrology forecast for the year 2023, we will be highlighting key events that are most likely to be taking place in the coming year. So do take note that majority of this forecast will be centered on Singapore, where we're based at. And of course, we will also be drawing associations with events occurring from other parts of the world because we are a global citizen now. And so if there is a crisis happening elsewhere, thousands of miles away, it will directly or indirectly affect us in some ways. So feel free to comment or ask questions you may have during the live feed. I will answer them right after the live show. So for the purpose of this live feed, entitled The New Normal Arrives, we have organized the key events according to their themes because these themes are changing areas, especially in the coming year ahead. Okay, let's take a look. Let's take a look at 2023, okay? Um, the key things that we are looking forward are the economy, the politics, um, political landscape, environmental issues that we're looking at, as well as social and generational issues. So first, Let's take a look at Singapore's chart and how it is doing so far. Okay, so for the purpose of this live feed, it is based on Singapore's context. Uh, we are the beacon of Southeast Asia, and because of that, knowing what our future holds is something that a lot of us are anticipating yet nervous about. And as you know, I have um, written an article on Singapore's birth chart on this year's National Day, in which I've described Singapore's character as a nation through its birth chart. So simply go to chironfoundation.com to check it out. But for this live feed, I'm going through some of the issues and matters that still affect Singapore till this day, according to the time Singapore became independent. Okay, let's take a look at Singapore's solar return chart this is okay for some of you who do not know what solar return means it simply means birthday all right it simply means the birth date of the nation such as in this case singapore which is 9 of august and next year will be 2023 so the reason why i chose the solar return chart is that um the birthday of the nation or any entity is a significant date for us to forecast the year ahead and for us to take a look at what's going on in the person or in the nation's life or what's going on with the nation in this case. And as we can see over here, I'm just gonna break it down really, really simple for you guys. Now, Taurus, okay, is ruling the eighth house on Singapore's chart in this case. Uh, Singapore's birthday chart, <laughs> all right? So eight house represents money that is not ours. It's like borrowed money and probably shared investments and resources. It's also called the house of inheritance because inheritance is a fortune that isn't yours until someone dies because of certain unfortunate things happened. The eight house is also associated with death, involving murder or terrorism but in this case Taurus sign is in the eighth house which represents material security of the nation right and it's corporations and we're looking at companies in Singapore businesses in Singapore and other SMEs and startups in Singapore okay so Jupiter and Uranus are within this house okay and Jupiter is the planet of expansion Uranus is the planet of technology disruptions, so changes and volatility. Um, and so much as 
So as much as employees of companies are going back to the offices and people are meeting up once again after the pandemic eases, um, the looming slowdown and possibility of a recession is kind of putting everyone on a temporary hole at the moment. Um, for you runners being in the picture, I see that there will be new ideas and some game changes coming up uh, in the near future that will take the companies forward in this new decade. However, there will be also many, many trends and fads in the market which will distract a lot of people along the way, a lot of investors, right? So investment-wise, it would be advisable to tread carefully in 2023 because of the slowdown of momentary fluctuation from time to time. And one thing is do not be, do not be ultra greedy in 2023, but do your research and homework more diligently. This time, if you really, really want to invest in any stocks or companies. Um, if you have been doing it, that's great. But in 2023, um, you've got to do twice as much, work twice as hard to you know, do your research and your homework because uh, it's going to be an unpredictable year ahead. Some things will look too good to be true next year, and it will be harder to discern between what's going to be profitable and what's not, All right? Next, we look at Chiron, okay? It's sitting near the descendant of the chart in the sign of Aries, which is ruled by Mars. Now, descendant is located in the seventh house of the chart, now, which refers to the area of other people in our lives. In mundane astrology's context, it means other nations, other alliances, relationships with corporations as well. So during this period of time, or during that period of time, either before or after National Day, there is a possibility for talks about national or even digital security, and the mood feels as though something must be done to enhance the physical, sentimental, and financial security of the nation. Our alliances with other countries are also at sometime at a tipping point um, where certain, certain decisions that we make will weigh heavily on the responsibility of the leaders. We'll look at Neptune next. Now, Neptune, as indicated on the chart, right, is at the last leg of the sixth house and Saturn just stepped into the house of Pisces, right? This is significant. Um, what this means is that work and daily lives are going to be confined to certain restrictions because of certain maybe long hours of work and the health of the nation, which includes people's mental and physical health. So in this time, right, in this time, even though Neptune is gradually moving away from the sixth house, which I don't think is going to move away until like a couple of years later, it's still there for the next, you know, couple of years and there's going to be a lot of people who will be going through um, life um, day to day. It's like day in, day out, as though there is a veil over their eyes with regards to the issues that are critical, especially when it comes to health matters, right? Mental health and wellness is still important, but the question is this, how many people generally bothers to look it up or seek help? Now, this denial could be due to stigma or it could be due to the conservative nature of the people. So there's something to look at, something to uh, ponder about in the coming year. Okay, and because the moon is in sextile aspect to Neptune, as indicated right up here next to the Taurus ruled sign, it is an opportunity for the people to get themselves educated in the area of health and wellness, as well as the importance of work-life balance. Now, Saturn, in fact, transits into Pisces on the 8th of March in 2023. It brings with it a lot of seriousness and dryness into the year. Now, Saturn is ruled by Capricorn, which is an Earth sign. Pisces is a water sign, which adds some dreamy element to the year. Now, the house that Pisces is in would be the eighth house in the month of March. So 
when both planets are within the same house in this context, the issues of shared finances, right, corporate finances, debts, bankruptcies, are all being brought up during this period of time. Now, speaking about bankruptcies, all right, uh, more people are beginning to file for bankruptcy protection, right? The number is still lower in 2019, but it's likely to increase in the coming year ahead. Uh, and um, for corporations or businesses this time, they are sort of, I would say, at risk of going bankrupt or losing their business altogether if they are not careful. Now, the slowdown definitely will take a toll on a number of people. But the good news is that the economy, the stocks and cryptocurrencies will not crash. <laughs> okay, there will not be a crash. And I don't think there will ever be a crash this year or this coming year, 2023. And as the mid-year approaches, as you can see, um, come June 2nd, 2023, we see that Jupiter, all right, as indicated there, Jupiter is in conjunction with the North Node. And with that, it carries with it some good news and bad news, right? Bad news is there won't be much happiness or contentment, right? A, a lot of talk about money and growth and expansion, but things are seemingly slow in a process and everyone's edgy, right? Everyone's edgy. Good news is this. North Node enhances whatever it touches. And so with Jupiter, there are opportunities for growth and expansion in the middle of the year, despite the gloomy outlook. However, you might, you might want to take this chance, in fact, to explore other avenues in your businesses or projects with discretion, of course. Meanwhile, Bitcoin is here to stay. Okay, In fact, cryptocurrency is not going away. Okay, Bitcoin has gone mainstream. And some companies are already using it as a mode of payment. Now, Ethereum as well. And in fact, Ethereum is probably going to fare a little better than Bitcoin in the increase with, it, with the increasing focus on the environment as it you know tries to cut its power usage by 99%. You know, however, regarding the effect on the climate on environment, um, I doubt there is much guarantee on the impact. But I'm just an astrologer, all right? I'm just an astrologer. In the age of Aquarius, what we call the air era, all right, digitalization of assets and other forms of communication is going to be here to stay. There will be more of it in the future, right? More of it in future. So for some of you who have yet to know what the air era means, okay? Let me explain. It refers to the age of Aquarius, which started on 21st of December, 2020, two years ago, okay? When the great conjunction occurred between Jupiter and Saturn, now ushering in a new era of the period. Before this era was the age of Taurus, back in 28th of May, 2000, all the way until 20th of December, 2020. Now, it's called the Earth Era, which means that things we do during the Earth Era and the Air Era are very different. In the Earth Era, it's all about money talks, money walks. It's all about making money. It's all about businesses that are earthly, such as retail, such as the brick and mortar businesses, big shops, traditional businesses, mining, constructions, manufacturing, etc. Okay, in the air era, it's really, really different. So with the ushering of the air era, digitalization of our lives occur at so many levels. Now, first, we have the airborne virus, which is the COVID-19. And then what we have is the lockdown, which started the Zoom calls and virtual meetings. Now, even virtual datings and dating apps have become widespread, you know, during this period of time. So the way we communicate now, the way we socialize now is totally different. And it is going to be the new normal. And the new normal has indeed arrived. And in 2023, there is going to be even more of this, right? More emerging technological trends revolving around the way we live, 
Get ready for more lifestyle changes and ideas that are beyond your wildest imagination. Well, let's take a look with the next one, Saturn in Pisces, right? With Saturn in Pisces, there are some major life changes taking place. Okay, so some of the examples are like this. There will be renewed focus on dreams and imaginations, some heightened need for some spiritual breakthroughs, increased ability to express emotion honestly and compassionately. There will also be some deeper connections to the collective values and goals. And what I mean here is that there might be the rise of more influencers in the space and there will be cultural influences from nation to nation, okay? Uh, new depths of compassion and understanding, renewed faith and trust in universal timing, deeper dive into the unknown, greater access to collective resources, willingness to break away from old habits and attachment, a chance to experiment with disruption, awakening to one's inner strength and wisdom, and last but not least, potential of taking advantage of unexpected opportunities. So this is also a reminder for us to think about what we're going to do with the mistakes, right? Or disasters that befall us along the way. Now, for instance, if you're going broke, for example, touch wood, right? What are you going to do about it? All right, is there a breakthrough, a solution? You know, it's challenging to question yourself, especially when things aren't going according to plan or according to what you expect next year. But it is still way better than living in denial, which is a likelihood for many next year. Now, you need to put your ego aside. In fact, everyone, including myself, need to put our ego aside and really face the reality of life in the coming year. And going back to the charts, right? We see Mercury, okay, hiding in the 12th house of Singapore solar return chart. In this, in this slightly, it has this slightly tense aspects to Pluto, right? In the fourth house. Um, well, <laughs> there could be issues of communication, right? Pluto in the fourth house, just gonna talk about that later. There could be issues of communication, transportations, or perhaps issues with neighboring cities or countries that could trigger the core of our foundation. So the triggering points could be related to places of confinement, such as prisons or hospitals. I don't know, like it, it probably does, does, it probably means criminal related, but I don't think anybody will see it, but there will be people trying to hide these issues from public scrutiny. And Mars in Virgo is going, is, is in the 12th house, um, right next to Mercury. Now, which indicates a lot of pent up pressures from within the nation, right? People are trying to get their lives together, okay? Trying to get their lives together. But the stressful thing is that there is widespread passive aggression almost everywhere, right? Virgo represents something like something prim and orderly, analytical and helpful. But Mars, on the other hand, is not a very friendly planet, right? It, it shows aggression, unhappiness, discontentment, stress, sometimes chaos, you know, even though there is ambition in getting things done, right? So I'm getting this feel that it is a national day or is the time next year that people are going to ask themselves some questions like, you know, is there any more handouts, you know, more welfare needs, you know, whether we can sustain our day-to-day -day living condition given the, given the price hike, the rise in taxations, inflations, and many other money-related issues. Okay, Venus shows itself to be retrograde, to be in retrograde in Singapore's solar return chart next year. This is going to be a more challenging year for Singapore to be in um, domestically and globally, facing newer issues of international you know, changes across the globe and pressures within the country in relation to human capital, marital and relational issues, financial security of the people, 
inflation of food, materials, assets, as well as the, the whole economic slowdown, right? The sun right next to Venus right here is also in the 11th house. The Leo, okay, the ruler Leo is present on the chart. So the 11th house in mundane astrology represents mob psychology and herd mentality. It looks at the changing of times through idealism and perhaps rebellion. So more people are going to feel the ongoing, ongoing sentiment of discontent. And I won't be surprised that there's going to be a lot of people will, who will take it online, all right? To the online networks and complain until the following year <laughs> because it's going to look bleak economically and people are going to be angry um, that the sentiment is anger and frustrations even though there may be handouts and of course the talks about mental health and wellness and companies are aiming to provide some sort of so-called welfare but something's gonna give right there's always a trade-off Right, companies are looking to get as much returns or as many returns of investments as possible, and bigger companies will spare you know lesser thought for its workforce. Now, the reason goes something like that. You no, know, I'm paying you to get the job done, and if you're not adding value to my company, producing what you need to produce, right, on the time, on target, you're considered redundant, right? We don't need and we don't have to waste our resources on people like you. So companies in general are turning inwards. They are looking at survival as a primary priority as compared to looking after the welfare of the employees. Now, this is going to be in 2023 when things are slightly rougher, I would say. And last but not least, where we look at Pluto. Now, Pluto is situated in the fourth house of Capricorn right here on Singapore's chart. And because Pluto is a generational planet, it takes many years being in the same house on the chart. Now, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and it is a sign of slowdown and restriction. So for that, we can say that since November 27, 2008, Pluto enters the fourth house at zero degrees on Singapore's chart. What does this mean? Okay, the fourth house in mundane astrology, right, represents property markets and housing in Singapore. What happened in September 2008? Lehman Brothers collapsed. That not only worsened the US stock markets, but sent a shockwave, right, a shockwave throughout the world, even in Singapore. And our housing market was impacted. Stock markets fell by 40% following the collapse. And when Pluto is present in a particular house on the chart, like the fourth house, it brings with it uncertainty and complications of the issues at hand. And, um, <clears throat> and since November 2008, the stressful aspect of what we call the drastic changes <clears throat> the drastic changes of stock markets and property are involved. So right now, it's crazy. I mean, right now, the rentals of residents and commercial properties are insanely high, insanely high, along with the um, purchasing prices. The question here is like, will there be, will there be any intervention from the authorities who will step in with a cooling measure perhaps so yeah so for that we we can anticipate um, sometime middle of the year yeah middle of the year let's also take a look at singapore's place in the world and how different parts of the world is affecting singapore in 2023 now, this is what we call the um, astro map for some of you who do not know what this is. It's used to, you know, I use it to do relocation astrology for people who want to migrate to a new country. Right? We can also use this to determine which countries have the potential of influencing our own 
with regards to their domestic and internal affairs. So as you can see here, right, let me zoom in. As you can see right here in Europe, okay, um, this little line right here, the sun line passes through Kiev. Now this is the sun uh, in ascendant passes through Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. So if there is anything that triggers Ukraine, okay, it will definitely affect us. And because it happens to be the sun line, things regarding the war might get better at the later part of the year. Now, this is some sort of a good news in a way. <laughs> um, I can only hope, right? I can only hope, but it might get better, okay? Um, however, it will intensify a little bit during the year, but it will most likely get better later on. Let's take a look at Asia, notwithstanding that. If you look at Pluto line, right? The Pluto line that cuts across cities in China, such as Shanghai, Taipei, moving down to Manila in Philippines, right? Things aren't looking very positive with regards to domestic affairs with these nations. Now, there might be some tensions going on during this period and old issues might resurface right, be brought back to discussion again. And Southeast Asia is one very fragile region, which is why we form the ASEAN, right? It's an alliance to support one another during such times, okay? Having said that, okay, um, I'm going to sum up the key events of astrological with astrological support. And uh, these are organized in a quarterly fashion, right? Um, I'm going to do this quarterly. So from January to March 2023, transit Venus will move into conjunction with Saturn on Singapore's chart. Venus represents national resources and finances associated with the banking sector. Now, Saturn is the planet that is harsh and restrictive. So when it comes to law and order, Saturn puts a cage around you, it confines you, but it also places a structure to tidy up the mess, right? We might find that the banking and finance sector is going to do their utmost best to insert appropriate contractual fallbacks or some transitions that are going to be made in shifting targets towards better risk management. With this Venus-Saturn aspect, there is a lot of fear with regards to giving in general. So for instance, even when you have a discount going on, you know, for some of you who are giving discount in your business, some people are still going to reconsider the value of the product or simply going back and forth with their budgets because they are fighting, you know, they're tightening their belt, right? Not wanting to spend much because of the slowdown, which becomes worse next year. The Mars planet, right? It transits over the ninth house of long distance travel, either by plane or by ship. So it could also be an international event where <clears throat> people gather or come together because Singapore's chart is a day chart where the sun is in the upper half of the birth chart. The most benefic planet, all right, is Jupiter and the most malefic planet is Mars. So Jupiter is Good luck. Mars is bad luck, <laughs> just to put it in a simple way. So Mars will form an opposition to the South Node, all right, um, by you know around February or so. And so having having this uh, kind of placement, right, having Mars transiting the ninth house, right here, right, signifies the need to exercise caution when traveling abroad by plane or by ship. I say this again, there is this need to exercise caution when it comes to traveling abroad by plane or by ship. It applies to import and export businesses as well. Now, hopefully not, but there might be incidents of shipping or flight accidents next year. Touch wood, I do not wish this thing to happen, but there is some indication on the chart that it might happen next year. Okay, I do not wish this to happen, but I'm just looking at the charts and 
just exercise a lot of discretion and caution next year when traveling. Singapore's moon will form an opposition to the transiting Mars right next year round around March or so, and then over to April. Now, this period indicates frustrations among the people. So this period, there will be power struggles, a lot of dissent over what is happening in the country and to their condition of living. All right. Um, prices are going higher next year, and many people are going to find it hard to make a living and even looking for jobs, right? Employment is going to slow down, but the influx of foreign labor is going to be ongoing nonetheless. Um, in fact, I think there might be slightly more of it. When we look at March 21st, right, when the sun enters the sign of Aries next year, it transits, right, it transits over Singapore's seventh house together with Mercury and Jupiter. Now, there is going to be an expansion of certain themes taking place in the country, such as transportations the way information is shared, all right, pardon me, the way information is shared, there might be some new trends in the technologies whereby people start using apps like, you know, ChatGPT, for example, for its ultra disruptive functions. Also, there is likely to be an increase in skilled foreign labor and investment from other countries. Now, these people will be here to stay in Singapore and do business here also for business dealings. So it's it kind of help to support the economy in a way, right? Um, this is going to be for the reserves. From April to June 2023, there is going to be a solar eclipse on 20th April 2023. Now this will see transit Mars in opposition to the moon at three degrees. Tension builds up among the people. And this transit will be in the 10th house, which carries the theme of government and authorities, as well as employers and business owners and C-suite executives. These people will be coming up with policies or taking certain actions that will create a stir among the people and those in subordination to them. These are likelihood. All right, the last time round that transit Mars is in opposition to the natally placed moon was in March 28, 2018. That was when North Korean leader Kim Jong-un um, Kim Jong-un pledged to denuclearize when he paid a surprise visit to Trump, right? And also this pushed the military to pay. I mean, Trump also pushed the military to pay for the border, <laughs> that border war that, you know, which caused quite a stir during that period. So it's like, it's like this planetary transit kind of caused some stirring among people. And people were just talking about it, right? That was the time during Facebook's uh, Cambridge Analytical scandal as well. That's relating to the breach of trust at that time in 2018. And it was found that Cambridge Analytics, or rather Cambridge Analytica, right? Yeah, also used the data from Facebook in the Brexit campaign. <laughs> so that kind of sums up the chaos that we might anticipate when the solar eclipse comes head on with transit Mars in opposition to Singapore's moon in 2023. So some issues will be brought to light and our, you know, and out in the open, in fact. Someone is going to pay for it. Someone is going to, I would say someone is getting into trouble. And there will also be an intervention from the authorities when the sun ingress into Taurus on April 21st, 2023. Now this happens when Pluto enters Aquarius next year. Now Pluto represents mass psychology and Aquarius represents technology and in innovation as well as humanity, right? There's going to be some major shift in how we utilize technology 
with the current digital infrastructure in place. Now, it's likely that newer regulations will be in place for the media industry and the dealings with conflicts of interest. Um, I'm not sure how to put this, but, but because the trend of technology next year is going to move really fast, there's going to be a lot of catching up for you know, bigger organizations to do, not just the smaller organizations to, to, to do. So that's probably the main concern because of the rising trends, the ups and downs, the fluctuations, the slowdown and all the chaos that's going on. So from 2nd of May, 2023 onwards, Pluto turns retrograde. So what it means is that it kind of moved backwards in the chart. So it falls back to the sign of Capricorn once again. And here we might experience some movements going on with regards to housing issues once again and the property market. Cooling measures, maybe. The price is still going to increase. Somebody's going to do something about it. And the, in and, and the inter intervention will not be too far away. Uh, this Pluto in Capricorn placement is going to remain until like 22nd January 2024. So the issue with housing price will be the talk of the town until the start of 2024. Jupiter moves into Taurus and it will form a square to Pluto in Aquarius. Uranus is in the sign of Taurus, but with Jupiter forming a sign-based conjunction with Uranus, something big is going to take over and disrupt the current trends of living and lifestyle. Do look out for things like newer abrupt policies, ultra-disruptive technology and trends, and also sudden losses or gains in the financial markets. Now, I'm just going to uh, caution the rest of you who are into financial markets. Uh, trade carefully, trade with care, do your research, you know, do whatever you can, right? And uh, the stocks are not going to do as well as the current year right now in 2022. However, I think if you do your research, there are buying opportunities, definitely buying opportunities. You just got to be very, very focused, very focused with the financial markets if you are an investor. Now, this period until June will be very tumultuous. And talking about the stock markets again, it's going to be dangerously volatile. So you don't want to be getting involved in speculative activities. Right. And um, this is for general, right? This is this is for everybody. In fact, if you are looking at your own uh, at your own personal chart, um, it's it's probably trying to tell you that you, you just got to be really careful. I do not know yet, but some of you may be lucky in a sense. You can speculate all you like, but that's just for the minorities. All right. So. With that said, there will be major themes, okay? Some of the major themes in 2023, right? Um, there will be trends, right? And FEDs going on next year up to 2000, even in 2024. But when it comes to things like speculation investment, it would be wise and advisable, okay? To do a lot of research, okay? Before jumping the wagon, all right? Um, uh, what I would suggest is that you think two times and three times reconsider before putting your money into an IPO. Uh, it's a different case for precious metal like gold. Um, you might want to you know, get an agent next year for gold because there might be some buying opportunities. All right. And beginning in mid-June where uh, it's a time where the crunch occurs. So um, when we're talking about crunch, right, we're talking about manpower. There will be restructuring. Um, and therefore, some of you who are working as an employee or, or rather as an employee, some of you who are working as an employee, you may want to um, be very prepared for this. We're talking about retrenchment. We're talking about restructuring. We're cutting out, cutting costs, right? Companies are cutting costs, right? There are certainty. There, there's, 
there are certainly going to be a lot of panic and uncertainty with health, work, and daily living. Oh, you bet, man. All right. This will be a prolonged thing um, until the middle of the year. Uh, We're looking at, or, or rather, no, sorry. Um, this will be more of a prolonged theme of 2023. We are talking about retrenchment, restructuring, and cutting costs. Um, it's going to be from middle of the year till 5th November. All right. Let's take a look at July to September 2023. Now, Venus will turn retrograde on 23rd July 2023. It will station direct on 4th September 2023. Now, during this period of Venus retrograde, right, like the last time round, it was in 2018, uh, which was from October 8 to November 17, when Venus turns retrograde. Now, self-love was prescribed during that time and relationships and finances were put under a microscope. Someone has to be accountable for something. So this is a recurring theme for this coming year. So at the same time, Venus will first form a square to the natal Neptune, which could also signal the start of a new wave of social movement that will examine the issue of women or scammers, all right? So on National Day, social issues are brought to light and are questioned. The tensions are going to be a little high. Um, there'll be mood of celebration, but then it would not be as good as compared to the previous year, which is this year but there will still be talks of working together to, to build a more inclusive society nonetheless, you know. But I guess there is growing discomfort of people, right, living in Singapore by that time. And so the authorities might be coming up with alternative solutions to curb the perennial problems going on among the people. And finally, we look at October to December 2023, there is going to be a solar eclipse in October, right? On October 14, 2023. Now, <clears throat> this is a signal of a new focus of health and public essentials, right? As well as the well being of the people that are now being brought to the light. All right. And Excuse me. If the war persists, right, the recession will also persist. It's um, sad but true. I do not wish this to happen, but according to the charts, according to what it is shown for the year 2023, it is not going to look good. However, let me provide a summary, all right? The conclusion for this whole entire forecast is this. The question we are, we are going to ask ourselves is that, is there going to be a recession? Well, there's going to be a slowdown, but if you're going to say a recession whereby it's going to affect your life, yes, it is inevitable. But on the other hand, um, the stock market isn't going to crash. But all the time, you know, all the time is going to be pretty low. Um, it's, it's going to be like ups and downs, but it's on, you know, pretty low and it's also going to be some opportunity for investors to you know to 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 buy some buying opportunities if you know what you're doing okay it's always good to buy low and sell high so next year if if certain things are low some things are really really too good to be true it's very easy to be greedy right it's very easy to be greedy when other people are fearful so next day, if everyone is fearful, the prices become low, right? And because of that, there are a lot of buying opportunities, but I got to do the research, all right? <laughs> you just got to do the research and not be too greedy yourself. Now, cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is here to stay. <clears throat> More companies are accepting Bitcoin as payment options, but it doesn't mean that it will rise again. Nope, not yet, not next year, all right? So instead of putting all your hopes into cryptocurrencies, all right, 
I, I, I never say that you cannot buy crypto, but you can leave your money there. All right. But it's advisable to diversify much more next year and invest wisely in better companies. All right. Um, so astrologically speaking, the stock market is going to be very volatile next year, right? Given the slowdown and all that. <clears throat> but my advice is to do your fundamental and technical analysis and then astrological analysis. Now you need these three analyses to make better decisions on your investments, right? The war in Ukraine, will still be ongoing. Both Russia and Ukraine will not give up easily. And in fact, it, it will most likely escalate and intensify next year. All right. But um, you just got to wait till the end of the year and see how that, ha how that turns out. All right. Because end of the year, it might become better. All right. There is a chance for the war to, to so-called end or cease. Right. So if you had taken a look at the astral cartography chart I put up earlier, okay, Singapore sun in the ascendant will cut across Ukraine on the map. So if there is any intensification of the war or matters relating to Ukraine, anything at all relating to Ukraine, Singapore will be greatly affected. It will take a hit internally. So next year will be the year you need to watch out and prepare for rainy days watch out for the news as well, right? Tension between the East and West is ongoing, especially between China and the US. So it would not be a surprise if China attempts, okay, to, to take control of the Pacific, um, which is already trying to do, um, trying to push buttons here and there. Uh, the, North, the South China Sea region is still um, vulnerable. And for South China, I mean, for Southeast Asians like us, our region is fragile, very fragile economically and culturally. All right. So the way people fight wars are different nowadays. We have the trade wars. We have the culture wars. So the new type of warfare in the air era is that of influence, is that of cultural influence and trade and commerce, right? It's all about money, but in a very, very different aspect, okay? So again, China's presence in the Pacific is still going to ring some bells with the nearby Australians and New Zealands, um, you know, as well as America, and the issue will be ongoing. It's going to be like a perennial one for a long time. So we look at the environmental issues right now. In summary, there are already shortages of food, energy, and materials. And with great demands, costs have risen. And this has fueled the highest inflation rate since the 1980s in many countries. All right, In this era of central banking, the biggest challenge remains macroeconomic. All right, The war in Ukraine has led to the biggest commodity shock so far. And because Ukraine is an important exporter of agriculture, right? <laughs> all our grains and all that. Having been, you know, devastated recently, it just means that, it, you know, th this is a threat to mass hunger across the globe. And already we are facing global shortages in food, energy, and materials. So with the rising uh, energy costs, uh, it means that the talk of sustainable, you know, environmental sustainability is, you know, inevitable. All right, we're talking about sustainability, right? We need energy, we need food supplies to survive. And because the demands are high and supplies are low, guess what? The cost will definitely increase. And this is the law of supply and demand. So you, you don't need a person or you don't need a you don't need a degree in economics to know this, right? And so we have an inflation, and I'm sure that you have already felt the pain that your char siu fan, you know, your pork rice, your duck rice, your chicken rice, and other dishes with meat and rice in it have already increased in price, 
Now, heck, the food in general, in fact, all food has already increased in price. So the air that you, I mean, the air, I'm talking about aircon, <laughs> aircon in electric city. Yeah, the bills are making you feel even more painful next year. They are going to be um, the cost of concern, right? The cost of concern and energy is, the, is, is precious. And for that, um, all the more we need to look after our own planet Earth. Okay, so see what we can do on our own part, right? To, to you know, help the environment, to save the environment in a way. I'm not talking about being noble, right? I'm talking about, you know, um, sustainability and knowing when to conserve energy, right? It's so precious nowadays. Climate change becomes a great talk of the town next year. And because we're facing real threats of environmental damage and global warming done by none other than humans in the history of the world. Renewable energy is going to be the source that many people will turn to in the coming year ahead. I shall repeat this. Renewable energy is going to be the source that many people will turn to in the coming year ahead. Renewable energy. Got that? All right. Social and general, all right, social and generational issues. All right, astrologically speaking, the disruption of technology in the coming months and years ahead, as well as the fact that we are in the age of Aquarius, the air era, now, means that the digitalization of daily living is going to be the new normal, right? There will be a generation of people who will find it hard to catch up. And Singapore's aging population, right, is going to find it difficult to catch up with the pace that the world is going right now. And therefore, we see that there will be a huge skills gap, right, and a huge generational gap. Now, this is an issue, a very deep social issue. Right. As we move away from the Earth era, which was the age of Taurus previously, into the current era, now many people who were used to you know, working with traditional methods of you know, bricks and mortar businesses, you know, finding themselves having no choice, right? no choice but to go online and digitalize their approach to business. Now, those that are not in you know, the digital space, will be displaced and it's sad, right? It's really sad to see that over the recent years, right? Many traditional hawkers, for example, with great tasting food have closed down and shut their businesses, right? That's not because their food standards have dropped, but because they failed to keep up with the times. They failed to embrace the air era. The age of Aquarius is here. The new normal has arrived. So this shows us very clearly Okay, that in the near future, keeping up with the pace of how technology is taking over our lives is going to be so important. And therefore, we need to constantly upskill ourselves and even side skill ourselves to remain relevant if we want to survive, especially right here in Singapore and especially in this world, because the world is moving super fast right now. So there, this is a summary okay for my astrology forecast for the year 2023 right and with that we will bring our facebook live on astrology forecast 2023 to an official end we hope you've enjoyed right learning about the year ahead and you know we can assure you that it will be filled with plenty of exciting opportunities right, along with his own unique challenges, right, we wish you the best of luck um, navigating whatever that comes your way next year, and leave you with this piece of advice. Always remain open to possibilities. All right, thank you, and good luck in 2023. Peace.